Like most commodities, market prices for platinum group metals, or PGMs, have presented a degree of complexity over the past 12 to 18 months, with several competing factors at play in the supply and demand outlook. Historically, PGMs, particularly platinum and palladium, have played an established role in the clean energy mix through their application as a core component of catalytic converters, which are used to reduce emissions from internal combustion engines. Concurrently, the rise of electric vehicles over the past decade has put the spotlight on key battery metals, such as lithium. But in 2024, an interesting trend is emerging which has the potential to underpin growing demand in PGMs as the global EV industry transitions from early growth to sustainable cash flow solutions. Analysts have observed the rise of plug-in hybrid vehicles which offer a low carbon transport alternative while also addressing consumer concerns over driving range and recharging infrastructure for battery EVs. A recent Bloomberg report noted that in June 2024, carmaker BYD, China's largest EV manufacturer reported a 58% increase in hybrid vehicle sales to 195,000, a figure which surpassed total sales for its battery-only vehicles. World Platinum Investment Council Director of Research Ed Sturk said this was a trend that should be closely monitored. I think one of the trends that's really emerged over the last 18 months or so has been a real slowdown in the rate of market penetration for battery electric vehicles. So effectively what we're seeing is the early adopters have adopted. They did that with incentives and tax breaks and so on. And the next cohort of consumers is just proving to be that bit more reluctant to make the switch. And of course, you know, most governments around the world have now also significantly wound down a lot of the support provided to consumers to buy battery electric vehicles. So that's overall in pretty much every major geography resulting in a much reduced rate of growth of battery electric vehicles. Look, to be clear, we're still seeing growth. It's not like this trend is going away completely. The drive trend will continue to electrify. It's just the pace of that growth has slowed markedly. And when one looks ahead to, let's say 2030, which is often the line in the sand that people tend to talk to in terms of target market penetration for battery electric vehicles, we're seeing most people bring down their estimates quite substantially. Now for the auto manufacturers, this creates a problem. Fundamentally, they still need to deliver to their CO2 reduction targets on a fleet-wide basis. Uh, and if consumers aren't buying battery electric vehicles, then they have to find alternative ways to meet that target. And uh, what we're seeing is that this is creating a sort of resurgence in partial battery electrification. So ultimately plug-in hybrids. But a new segment that's emerging, particularly in China, is what's called extended range electric vehicles. And these are plug-in vehicles, but it's almost turned around the other way. They're ultimately battery electric vehicles, but with a gasoline engine in there as a generator. So that effectively acts as a range extender. Now these vehicles, it's the fastest growing vehicle segment in China, more than a million units expected to be sold this year. As it turns out, having done some more research recently, these engines are actually quite a bit larger than we were expecting. So typically one and a half to two and a half litre turbos. The PGM requirements are exactly the same as for a pure ice vehicle. So ultimately supporting a higher for longer automotive demand picture. And some of them, even in the US, uh, Dodge is expected to launch a pickup truck there that's an extended range electric vehicle in the second half of this year. Melbourne's going to come with a three and a half litre V6, really quite sizable engines that do support the overall outlook for automotive demand for platinum. Hybrid vehicles combine small internal combustion engines with the latest battery technology to achieve increased driving range with a lower carbon footprint. And it's an industry where PGMs are expected to continue to play a key role, with a more targeted use case compared to traditional ICE vehicles. With prices for both platinum and palladium rising back above US dollars an ounce in June, Sturk said there were a number of macro trends influencing the global PGM market heading into the second half of 2024. Look, I mean, we don't forecast prices us specifically, but I'd say that overall, it's the fundamentals of supply demand deficits. So we've got a supply continuing to run short of projected demand. Ultimately, this is due to a very constrained mining environment in South Africa. There's been a big pullback in the prices of PGMs as a whole, specifically palladium and rhodium. All of these metals are mined from the same ore body. So when you look at the economics of the mines, you have to factor in the prices of the six PGMs, plus gold, plus copper, nickel, and chrome. Now, with the exception of chrome and copper, actually, we've seen price pressure on most of those commodities, and also with the exception of platinum, which has remained relatively stable. There's also a big challenge in terms of, or a lot of headwinds in terms of recycling supply. That's due to regulatory hurdles in North America, the US specifically, and also in China. 
that's limiting the, the recycling of spent auto catalyst and reducing output there. So fundamentally, those in combination with the higher for longer automotive demand just sort of ultimately results in continued market deficits for platinum. For palladium, we see market deficits continuing to at least 2026 and possibly longer. So the expectations of palladium moving into a surplus are being continually pushed back at the moment. And ultimately, you know, if you've got a market that's in a shortfall, eventually you'd expect that to begin to reflect in pricing. So, you know, in a normal commodity, if you've got a, a deficit, you'd expect pricing to rise until you attract more supply into the market or until you begin to price demand out of the market. Now, we think both mine supply and demand for the PGMs is typically actually quite price inelastic. So you can end up with a period where there's quite a large disconnect between prices and underlying fundamentals without any real reaction from either supply or demand. And having recently visited China as part of Shanghai Platinum Week, and given the recent rise in BYD's plug-in hybrids, Sturk said the sentiment towards platinum and the broader PGM basket was improving. The hybrid story is definitely a factor. The interesting thing about Shanghai Platinum Week is is much sort of more broad based than that really. The number of end uses for these metals is really quite staggering. Now China's the biggest consumer of PGMs globally. It's a pretty opaque market for us in the West to understand. Interestingly, when you go there, they don't really have a very good level of insight into what's going on in the rest of the world either. They don't fully understand their supply chains. You know, I think that's because of the information availability in China is perhaps as easy as in the rest of the world. So Shanghai Platinum Week is really good for getting the East and West to meet together and get a bit of understanding of what each other are collectively up to. In terms of the PGMs within China though, what really stand, stood out from this Shanghai Platinum Week was the, the real breadth of different applications that these metals are being applied towards. And this ranges from everything from you know, hydrogen related through to medicine and all sorts of other sort of technical applications in between, as well as of course for the automotive industry. The changing sentiment towards PGMs bodes well for Bunnings producers like Southern Palladium, which is now well advanced in bringing its world-class Benguinyama project in South Africa's lucrative Bushveld complex from exploration to development. The recent completion of Southern Palladium's comprehensive two-phase drilling program further underscores the consistency of mineralisation at Benguinyama and lays a strong foundation for the upcoming mineral resource update in the September quarter. With its next resource update, SPD is targeting an indicator resource that will form the basis of the forthcoming pre-feasibility study later in 2024. With the PGM market bubbling away, the recent spike in BYD sales points to a looming opportunity for companies like Southern Palladium, who appears to be timing its run to perfection.